It's the NFL on EA Sports. Charles and I have been looking forward to this one all week. And off we go from Tampa. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So here are the Buccaneers ready to go on offense with a new man at the helm here for 2023 in his sixth season now in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. The former number one overall pick has had his ups and downs in recent seasons, but he finished strong last year and inherits a really good offense in Tampa that should set him up for success. Now a third round pick a year ago. Here's Rashad White. He pushes through a would-be tackler to get about three yards, second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Now second and seven from the 23. Mayfield now. The pass is caught by Kate Otten. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. Third and seven now. And that's when it's fun to play defense, when you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play. That's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. Mayfield to throw it. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. Here's Jones. So a change of possession here on the punt. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll be led out by a first-round pick back in 2021 from Ohio State. It's Justin Fields. And not only does he have all the skills that you're looking for as a quarterback, he's incredibly tough and plays the game fearlessly as both a runner and a passer. You provide a good running game around him and let him throw deep off of play action, you've got an all-star in the making. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 40. Here's Fields. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Two yards to go, second down. Fields going to keep it running right. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. Nice pickup. Ten yards and a first down on the keeper. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people are worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. A six-yard pickup. Right side, Claypool's got it. And Claypool going to have a Bears first down as he'll get the ball down inside the 30. Seven yards there and a first down. If you're these receivers, you got to be ready because when he's going to throw it quick on that RPO, he's going to throw it quick. And this is why you spend time with your guy either in the offseason, during the week, the whole bundle. 
because sometimes just telepathy. You both see the same thing, and he knows get the ball to him right away. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. That's a very nice game there. A confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. On first down, it's Fields. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Line of scrimmage, the nine. Second and about a yard. Now it's Fields off the bootleg. That's to Moore, and he's got it. Touchdown, Bears. A nine-yard touchdown there. And the Bears are on the board first here on the road in Tampa. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stuff it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. Santos with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. On second down, they'll run with White. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Mayfield from the gun on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. And already down seven to nothing after the touchdown a minute ago. So a three and out here would not be ideal for them. Nice job finding his receiver there. And they get the first down. First down, here's White. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Second down and four. Throwing Mayfield. Open man, it's Palmer. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. 
Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. A quick throw caught by Evans out wide. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and that will bring up second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. They work now on second and nine. Play fake, Mayfield. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. On third down, Mayfield. Looking deep downfield. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, how about the challenge we're seeing here in this game early? Man coverage against some fleet receivers. That time, the defense won. Here's Jake Camarda now. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Fields on first down. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. From the gun, here's Fields. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, it's almost as if they didn't leave the field after their first drive. They picked right up where they left off. Another good throw there. And this offense humming here in the early going. They run the option here on first and 10. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play as it takes us to the end of the first quarter. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a second and 10. They'll toss it out right to Herbert. Gets past one man. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. Third down at six. Fields. And this is going to be incomplete. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense. And now they get to turn it back to their offense. Now here's Trenton Gill now. Back deep for the Bucks is Devin Tompkins. Not too shabby here. This will skip out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. 
And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. They'll start here with a handoff to White. And he'll get what he can up the middle, three yards, and that'll bring up second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's a toss right side with White. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Mayfield looks to throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's gonna bring up fourth down. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far, offensively, or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big time spark somewhere, but it's not gonna come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Oh, the return is Jones. 42 yards on the punt, just two on the return. And the Bears take over. The Chicago offense set to get started. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They'll start out here with the option left. Fields hit and the ball is loose. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. A call in luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for Chicago. Herbert making a nice play there, coming off a 700-yard campaign, despite making just one start in 2022. Played a big part in the Bears becoming the fifth team in NFL history to rush for 3,000 yards in a season. On first down, right back to Herbert. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. The ball on the 32. It's second and two. Now Fields locates Mooney on the out route. And Moody going to have a Bears first down as he'll get the ball down inside the 30. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Back to throw. Fields. That is caught by Herbert. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. 
This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. So the completion good for six yards. And now two yards to go on third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Another shot from the one on second and goal. Field's going to hold on to it. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Justin Fields keeping it himself from a yard out. And the Bears have taken a two-touchdown lead now. And maybe there that was just a case of completely overlooking the guy holding the football. It certainly felt like it, didn't it? Because on my checklist, okay, as a defender, <laughs> QB's last. <laughs> Running back, fullback, heck, jet sweeps nowadays. Before you even get to thinking about the quarterback might actually keep it. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Back now comes Tampa Bay. They're staring at a two-touchdown deficit, 14-0 to score as they regroup with first and 10. Let's ride, dog. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, dog. Here's Mayfield. That's caught down the field by Palmer. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. Second and 10. To throw Mayfield. And this one too low. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. And it's intercepted. And the Bears are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. 
Oh, and I saw the pressure coming at him. That just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it, and the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy, and can he step into a throw. And when you can't do that, oftentimes interceptions result. We switch the attention now to Khalil Herbert as this offense comes out for their next drive. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Now a first down throw, Fields. And he fit, but in the end, the pressure too great, and he goes down. The big Vita Vea pushing his way through to wind up with a sack. I think this defense, Charles, realizing the deficit they're facing, they're going to have to step up and make more plays like we just saw there. Yeah, and those are the type of plays that can focus a defense because, as we know, they've had their trouble so far in this one. But they just proved to themselves that they can get to it, and I expect them to continue to bring that type of pressure in order to try and turn around their fortunes. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. They don't want to repeat a first down. They'll keep it on the ground. And he'll push forward here for a good little run as the clock continues to run. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. They need 18 yards here on third down. But one more time, they'll keep it on the ground. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. Now here's Trenton Gill on to punt. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Clock at 20 seconds to go in the half as they come up first and 10. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. It's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two touchdown game. As we toss it, in. and okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently, we're going to get right back to it. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. A two touchdown game, 14 nothing the score as we get rolling again here in this second half. Valus Jones now from his end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. To throw his fields. 
Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. I think the defense surprised him there with that blitz on first down, but give him credit. Stayed cool under pressure and still found a way through the extra rushers for positive yardage. Well done. Second and eight coming from the 19. Fields now to throw. Open man completes it to Claypool. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead, but those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach, and that's a strong step towards getting it done. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and 10. From the 50, here's Fields. They'll set up the screen to Herbert. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Down to about the 37. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. And they run the option on second down. And down right around the 32-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Here's Fields. That is caught. And he will have the Bears first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. A beautiful fake. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Holding offense. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because, remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. you got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. Second and 16. Hand off right side for Herbert. Now third down is looming. A pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Here's Fields. He sets to fire deep. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Absolutely no disguise on that one. They just went for it. Put him out there and said, go deep. Let's try and hit him. Unfortunately, to no avail. Santos' kick is up and through, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. 
Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. Following the made field goal, out instead is the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick this away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at the 20. They'll start the drive with a give to White. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. So first and 10 now from the 30. They keep it on the ground, White again. And he gets this to the 35, good for a gain of five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gain five yards on it, and be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. They run straight ahead here with White. Now the ball comes loose. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Well, if these guys wanted to get back in this game, they needed an almost perfect second half and down three scores. A lost fumble here certainly doesn't fit into that plan. That reminds me of my plan in college to get an A on the papers I turned in, but that didn't work out too well either. <laughs> too many mistakes by both of us. <laughs> I mean, that's just pure and simple. And that's why that's exactly where they are in this ball game. They're going to need a huge turnaround if they want to try and win this. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. The previous play is under review. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Mayfield to throw it. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I'm getting the sense that this offense is getting frustrated. Here we are into the third quarter, and they've had plenty of opportunities to get in sync. Thus far, that hasn't happened. They're looking for answers both on the sidelines and in the huddle looking at each other. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return, and out will come the offense as they take over. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 24. Now it's Fields. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Well, that turned out better than most of the passes he could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent, but the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape, and they paid dearly for not locking up. 
On first and 10, it's Herbert. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. 65 yards on the ground for him so far. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that'll send them back to the drawing board. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Looking to throw. Fields. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. And look at this, it's a fake. the 20. Look at the big man rumble. Five. The fake punt works to absolute perfection. And the Bears are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. Well, here is one you do not see often. A fake punt run all the way to the house for a touchdown. Number one, you fooled the defense. They thought for sure the ball was going to be punted. But you also know you have to pick up excellent blocking going downfield to spring your runner after the fake. Well... Santos now to add the PAT. And the lead is now 24. Well, normally when your punter fakes it, you're just hoping for a first down. There he got the first down and six points on top of it. What a play. Baby. Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter Trenton Gill to kick it away. And he will be taken down here on the return on what will wind up being the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Well, I hate to say it, but at this point, I don't really know that they're playing to win with this deficit in the fourth quarter. They're just trying to erase that zero on the scoreboard, Charles, and get some type of momentum to carry into the film session tomorrow. If you get any type of points on the board, it'll count as a moral victory, although no one will talk about that in the post-game press conference. That's not something you mentioned in the NFL. And this loss, it already stings and will for a while, but everyone on that offense knows it'll sting a lot worse if they don't put some points up on the board. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw taken in by Palmer. And he's brought down. The Bucks passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but 
Certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Mayfield. And his throw here is incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say it was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. The offense on third down, they've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and four. Going to the air again with Mayfield. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 20-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Finally, a first red zone opportunity for these guys. First and 10 right at the 20. They'll try the right side here with White. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. Now second and nine. They stay on the ground with White. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And the Bucs are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. White will score. Touchdown, Buccaneers. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one-yard line, and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind-melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. He's got it. So they convert the two that keeps their slim hopes alive as we're back to a two-score game. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure, but that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready, because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And this will come out to the 25 as Jones elects for the touchback. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. If they can score here, they have a chance to make this a three-possession game and all but put things to bed. It's showtime, baby. Fields and the Bears now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now Herbert to start the drive. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. 
Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Escaping the pressure right. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Give them 22 there on the third down conversion. That is an absolute backbreaker. That was a design passing play, wasn't a draw. You think you got him stopped, good coverage downfield, and he's able to pick up the first with his legs. Defensively, that kicks into your psyche and hurts a little bit, doesn't it? It certainly does, and, and here's the thing. Anytime you give up a first down, it hurts you psychologically, but it hurts more when they get it this way because you've covered everything. He didn't have any place to throw the football. He takes off running and picks it up anyway, and now you have to stay on the field for an extra set of downs. And really could have used that stop trailing here in the fourth. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion, but I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync stayed in great communication and as he dragged across each zone you see him pointing communicating there he is and they passed him off to each defender ended up making a nice play even though it was complete well that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes but they've been moving it well all game on the ground this is another one that keeps them moving forward here's third and three Out of the gun, Fields. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he is going to have the first down and that is going to take us to the two minute warning. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, things obviously not going their way. Trailing here in the fourth quarter, and that penalty going to go ahead and give the other side some extra yardage. We all know it's an intense game and things can get heated out there. That's part of the battle. But bottom line, you got to keep your cool. That was not an example of doing that. Herbert powering up the middle. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left, as they call the timeout defensively. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Speed is the name of the game when it comes to RPOs, and sometimes you can be a little too quick, thus inaccurate, incomplete. Out of the huddle now for play number nine on this drive. This is third down at eight. On third down, Herbert. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll run here with Herbert. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play.
On second down, a run with Herbert. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. Call it a gain of two as they're knocking on the door now. Third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Fields going to hold on to it. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. Justin Fields, a three-yard run as he kept it himself. And the Bears have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. I suppose it wasn't out of the realm of possibility that we could have seen a comeback, but that touchdown should put any hopes of a comeback out of reach. It's been a really quality effort for him here in this one. And no matter what else you think, you have to admire the initiative to finish things off their way. Don't leave anything to chance, no matter how small the odds of a comeback were. Send it home with a touchdown and get to celebrating. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So out come the Bucks now. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Now Mayfield. And that went to the right side and incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Mayfield's throw taken in by Evans here. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. That one a gain of 20 in a first down. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. He's going to let it fly. And he hauls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. Trey Palmer, 58 yards. And the Buccaneers are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Steps away to his left. And they are three for three on two-point conversions as he is into the end zone for the score. And with a successful two-point try, the QB rolling out, I would imagine on the defense that makes it tough. When you, he goes out, he's got the option to run or pass. Yeah, it really does. If you decide not to bring extra people or extra pressure, maybe you have to have a spy on the quarterback, someone to account for him, because oftentimes that is... Fields down to a knee here, and that should just about put a bow on this one. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. 
And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Ah, oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel, came in full confidence, believed in themselves, and got it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been.